This is a tutorial to demonstrate the latest intelligent 2D to 3D video conversion functions within 3D Combine. It will be split into two parts. There will be a simple part for beginners and then a more advanced section for more experienced users. Uh, this tutorial was done with version 6.17 of 3D Combine. So I'll start with the simple method. So within 3D Combine, the simplest way to access the functions is through the guides menu. Uh, these are cut down versions of functions that will step you through a wizard. So in order to do an automatic 2D to 3D video conversion using the intelligent mode, we select guides, then video 2D to 3D, and then intelligent. And if you look at the bottom of the screen here, you will see that when I hover over intelligent, it says automatically convert a 2D video file to 3D using image analysis. There's another method which uses tracking uh, based methods, which is covered in other tutorials. So I'll select intelligence and it prompts me to load the source 2D video file. This is the one that I want to convert. So I shall do that and it will load in the left hand pane. And then the program will automatically convert that video to 3D. And the delay use experiencing here is it loading up the conversion engine. So having done that, it will now prompt me to de select the desired output format and save, click on save video. By default, it's parallel, which is the left and the right paired together. Um, for the purpose of this tutorial, I will select a color anaglyph because that will make it easier to see what's going on. I then click on save video and I select the output format. By default, it will create an MP4 file. You can also create an AVI file, a high quality AVI file, a lossless AVI file, or a MOV file. If you're not sure, select MPEG4. I will just call this output. So you can see what's going on now. It's working through the video, converting it to 3D, and you can see that as it converts it into 3D, you're getting the red uh, highlights here. If you've got some red and green glasses, you can put them on and you will see a 3D image. And that will run through now to completion. Uh, I can allow it to complete or I can cancel it, which is what I'm going to do. And that's really all there is for the, the simple mode. So if that's all you're looking for, you can stop here and go and try your videos. I'm now going to look a little bit of what's happening behind the scenes, how you can do this function without the guides and the extra options that enables in terms of improving or tweaking the quality of the video. So in order to do this without the guides, I'll return to the, uh, the main view by unclicking preview. So this gives me my left and my right view back so I can see what's going on. So I will go file, open video, 2D left. So I'm just gonna open a single video. And as you see at the bottom, it says open an existing 2D video for combining or converting to 3D, which is what we want. So I select that. I select the same file as I did before. Um, I'm just gonna clear the filter list because this has been automatically populated by the guides venue menu uh, function but you can see what it did it created this auto 2d to 3d intelligent filter and I'll show you how to bring that back so I'll clear the filter list I'll just redraw the view um, and if I if I play now you'll see that nothing's happening in the right hand image because we don't have a video and we don't have any conversion going on so we've just got the 2d video playing in the left so to get back to what the guides option was doing, I'll open filters just to so, you, so you can see what's going on. You don't need to open that view. And I'll go into the depth map menu. This creates some new options on the right hand side. And I can select auto 2D to 3D, intelligent. And again, there are other methods which I won't go into in this tutorial. I click on OK. And now you can see that I've got an image in the right again. And if I click on play, both of those will update. And if I go to preview 3D, I can get back to my anaglyph uh, version that I had from the manual mode. Okay. So all I've done there is recreated what the guides function does. So I'm going to remove that filter again and go back to the, this view. Um, and now I'm going to show you how to get just the depth map. So when it does intelligent conversion, it actually creates a depth map and then it converts that to 3D. So we're going to create depth map. You'll see this option you have here, which is left only. That creates the depth map using the new intelligent mode. So I click on OK. 
So you can see the depth map for this, this view. And there's not much going on here, so it's not the best, best depth map. So I'm just going to play through for a second. Let's find something a bit more interesting. So here's here's a depth map for an actual scene, and you can see uh, you can see the outline of the the little squirrel um, and and the tree and the other animals in this scene. If I put it into the uh, 3D preview mode and just insulate it, that's probably not the best way. Um, go back to an angle. You can see the the de grey depth map overlaid over the red image. So you can kind of see what's going on. Um, going back to the main view. I can now go make 3D. So this will convert the picture plus the depth map into 3D. And if I leave at the default, which is uh, 0.2, no, and no, then I'll pretty much get back to what I had uh, by using the automated mode. So again, if I go into the anaglyph view, you can see there's a 3D image here. So what is the advantage of doing this method? Well, there's a couple of advantages really. Um, Firstly, is if I remove the 3D conversion uh, s stage here, you can see I've got some more options. So I can do things like I can increase the depth slightly, so I can make it pop out of the screen more or go back into the screen more. I can select a higher quality of background filling. So when you do a conversion to 3D, it actually has things move relative to each other and that exposes uh, image pixels that aren't actually populated, like background items that have been uncovered, uh, and the program has to work out how to fill those in. So there are two modes, uh, and this allows me to select the high quality one. Um, finally, it allows me to have the option to warp both the left and the right images. Uh, the advantage of that is that each of the individual images actually gets warped less, so you get the same depth effect, um, but, but with fewer artifacts. So I'll select yes on that. Uh, and if I go back again, uh, you'll see three, back to the 3D image. Uh, the eagle eye view will notice that there's much more pronounced kind of cyan and red around uh, the ears, uh, and that indicates the greater depth that we've chosen. And if you do have any 3D glasses, uh, you can put them on, and you can see um, you can see what we've got here. Okay, so that's part of it. So just to illustrate, I will now save this video. So if I click on save, I call it output two. Go back to the start of the video, start processing through, but with these, these options that we've set, which will produce a higher quality output with more depth. Uh, and the reason it doesn't do this by default is it, it plays it safe in the automated uh, version. So it, it uses a, a comfortable level of depth uh, and it, it chooses a, an option which is kind of a Optimi optimal for speed uh, versus artifacts. Okay. So what else can we do? Well, again, if I take away the conversion, we've got a depth map here, so we can actually do some manipulation of that depth map before we convert. Um, for various reasons, sometimes the conversion isn't perfect. Um, sometimes there might be some artifacts we want to get rid of. There might be some effects we want to do. Um, you can actually save this depth map and edit it in another tool and bring it back out. Um, you can uh, chain a number of different depth map videos together. Um, but what I'm going to show you how to do is just use the inbuilt process depth map functions. So if I click on process depth map on the drop down, you'll see there's a number of different uh, filters available here. Um, essentially, what they're, they're generally doing is trying to improve the match of the depth map to the the 2D image on the left hand side here. So, um, and I'll, I'll illustrate a few, but essentially these top two try and match the depth map to the image. Uh, these next ones look at blocks uh, of image uh, and try it. So if you've got items at the wrong depth, but maybe they, the color of the image matches, this will try, try and make the things th the, uh, the same depth so they don't get split across two different depth planes. Uh, this, this is another way of trying to align it with the image. Um, this one was, it's called sharpen, sharp and falling edges. So sometimes you end up with slightly smeared out depth maps and that can result in a slightly smeared out conversion. So this will just sharpen those up and should give you nice crisp uh, borders between the layers. Uh, Normalized brightness. So this one just maximizes the brightness uh, and hence the depth of a given depth map. So I'll illustrate this one first. So you can see all that's happened is the bright bits have become as bright as they can and the dark bits have become as dark as they can. Um, and if I do a conversion to 3D with this mode, I can keep the smaller depth that I had, um, 
and you'll see that when I go to the color anaglyph mode I've got quite pronounced depth here uh, and that's because we're, we've normalized that depth map so the, check the differences in layers is more pronounced to start off with okay um, carrying on down so uh, medium filter so if there's noise on the depth map for some reason odd pixels this will just clean it up um, maximize so what this does is it generally increases the size of the foreground uh, depth maps and again that can actually help it may sound counterproductive but it can actually help when you get objects smeared into the background so again if I illustrate you'll see when this is applied everything just just books out a little bit uh, and, and generally that will actually have a positive impact if you've got any artifacts you see it hasn't really disturbed the image in any meaningful way um, and then flatten background so what that basically just attempts to do is in certain scenes and this is a reasonable example um, you can end up with structure in the background which may not be appropriate so this this section here is really just into the distance um, and what it tries to do is just is just flatten that out um, it can be a bit hit and miss depending on how the uh, the objects are positioned within the scene uh, it's useful if, if sometimes the background is jumping around uh, as part of the conversion and then I'll illustrate one of these blocking functions as well so if I block by color for example so I'm telling it that implicitly that say the uh, the squirrel is all brown here uh, and therefore I want him to all be the same depth that's what it's done um, you can see this blockiness that is the result of this filter um, but you can use another filter which is uh, the match one here uh, to, to remap the two images together uh, fix just means it will apply a fixed um, fixed size kernel when it's doing the corrections and invariant means it will scale it with the, the size of the, um, the image you're working with it's probably the better choice and you can see a lot of that blockiness has gone immediately uh, So I'm just going to see if I, I can illustrate an example of one of these. If I go into Make 3D and I, I set this to 1 now, which is a very large amount of depth. Um, I use the high quality background fill and I don't warp both images. Um, and I just let's just have a look at the right image here. Um, you can start to see just a, a little bit of artifacts here. So you can see the tailing of the tips of the ears into the background and some smearing here. Um, so if you want this level of depth, the default depth map isn't quite good enough. Um, if I, um, for example, maximize that now, and I do the same conversion, then you can see that that smearing is actually gone. Everything's nice and sharp. So that, that's just one example, really, of, um, of, of how this can work. Um, also, you'll notice on the right-hand side here, the... Um, this looks a bit funny. This is, as I said, because it's trying to it's trying to work out what needed to go in this section of image. It doesn't have these pixels, so it's having to interpolate. Um, if I remove that filter, I just repeat again uh, with high quality background. You can see it's actually done a much better job. Um, so there's one example of, of, of high, high quality can be superior to the standard method. Um, it's not always the case, but generally that's the superior option. Um, so again, let's say I'm happy with this. I've got really great depth now. Uh, I've got my filter in place. So again, I go, I select my color anaglyph, uh, and I just save the video, and I'll just call it maximized. And again, it'll go back to the start. You can see uh, just in the, the separation between the red and the green here how much more depth there is in this image. Uh, and that'll just process through to the end. And that's it for now. Thanks for watching.